you're challenging the people of God not to, to settle and be satisfied for the level that they are currently living, living on because there is another level that when you are ready, God is ready to level you up. Gospel of Luke, the, the fifth chapter, if you have the use of your, your lens, we invite you to stand for the reading of God's word. Gospel of Luke, the fifth chapter. For expediency sake, we're just going to take verses 17 through 26. When you found it, say, I'm right there. Right there. You read silently while I read aloud. One day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof, lowered him through a mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this man who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So, he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of God. I want to use as a subject for today. This is just a demonstration. This is just a demonstration. This is just a demonstration. One thing that I learned um, very quickly in my time as a classroom teacher um, is that every person who sits in your class is not your student. You gotta understand today this is gonna be a helicopter and not an airplane. We're gonna go up quick, so I need you to hang on. Every person that sits in your class is not your student. In other words, for all the teachers in the house, you may be feeling me on this. Every student that sit down and takes a seat don't intend on taking anything else. They ain't came to take a lesson. They ain't came to take a pencil out of a backpack. They ain't, they ain't came to take nothing but a seat. And that's all they will do for class. They have come to take a seat. Because every person in your class ain't a student. And our text opens up by saying one day Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting. And, and it wasn't just a couple of them. The text says that they came from all over. They came from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. They came from near and far to sit. Uh, can I give you a, a point that wasn't even really in my prayer? Be, uh, be careful when you are in the house in God's presence, and the only thing that can be used to describe you is that they came and they sat. Yeah, wow. yeah that's good. Mm, I got it. Can, can I say this the way your pastor may not like it? You can stay at home and sit. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. COVID has gifted you the privilege yeah. of being able to sit at your house and watch this online, and you just came. To sit, what are you doing here? You can sit on your couch, you can sit 
on your bed. You can sit close to your kitchen so that way when you want a snack, you can eat it and come back and then play from in the ball. If you just came to sit, what are you doing here? In other words, the reason why some of us can't level up is because you refuse to stand up. In other words, if God has been good to you, I, I dare you in this moment to stand up. Mm -hmm. Let me put it another way. If he allowed you to see a new year with new chances and new opportunities and new possibilities and new hope and new faith and new love, I dare you to stand up. If you're not on a hospital bed, putting up tomorrow is not knowing what tomorrow looks like, I dare you to stand up. If your kids are healthy and safe and doing good and growing and growing, I dare you to stand up. It's power. 
In other words, be careful when demons know more than you do. Uh-oh. That's what all this is looking at. Because I'm not talking about nobody in here, because y'all know. But there were some men because Jesus is in the house. And he's teaching and he's preaching. And so word spread. So the text says some men came carrying a paralyzed man. Doesn't get a name, just get a condition. He's paralyzed. He's it's on a mat. And they tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. But they could not find a way because of the crowd. And this is going to be a quick point because I don't want to offend nobody. But if we go back, it said that the people in the house that they poured out of the house were the religious leaders of the law. They were teachers and Pharisees and people who knew. In other words, they were church folk. The men couldn't get their paralyzed friend to Jesus because of the crowd. But the crowd was church folk. Paralyzed men in need of Jesus. Church folk prevent the men who needed Jesus from giving. Could, could it be that sometimes we are guilty of being the reason why the people who need to be in the house can't get in the house. Because you've got your own pew and you've got your special parking spot in the Because people can't smell a certain way and look a certain way because of skirt is too short or makeup is too heavy because they ain't got a haircut or they suit is dirty. Could it be that the person who needs Jesus can't get him? Not because of the world, but because of church. Church folk, saved folk, delivered folk, religious folk, people who know scripture. Jesus wouldn't love you, look at you, look. Preach, boy, preach. People in need of Jesus and they can't get him to him because of the crowd. And the sad thing is, on the crowd. Well, what do you do when you are the crowd? Preventing somebody from getting to Jesus. So I was talking about somebody else because that couldn't be y'all would never be part of the part of the crowd. But I was looking at the at this text and the, the text says that in spite of the crowd, when most people would go home, they found another way. They found a way. Now sometimes we, we 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 glorify the text. We make it seem like that these were two and three story houses and they didn't have to, to, to throw ropes up and create a pulley system to pull. That's not the kind of houses right. they lived in. The houses that they lived in, because of the region that they lived in, were lower. Not only that, because of the weather, they had stairs because people would spend time on the roofs. They had parties on the roof. They sunbathed on the roof. They had access to the roof. So that ain't, that ain't the shout. So, so we see them get this man on the roof. Now, if I'm the house owner, I'm upset because you done tore my roof up. You done tried to make it seem like they done did some sort of pulley. So I don't care about the pulley. Fix my roof. But they do what they have to do and they open up a hole in the roof and they let this man down. Text says, catch it in the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. It says that when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, one thing that I have learned uh, being married and having kids uh, is that you become an expert in facial expressions. Well, no. Not because I can see them, but because I have them. At least that's what's been told to me. My wife 
says that me and my son, so maybe it's a man thing, I don't know. She's, but she's, she has a way of saying that she knows what I'm thinking, not because of what I said, right. but because of how my face look. Well, now. Yeah. And I have a, my response to you is just don't read my face. <laughs> Stop reading my face. You want to know what my face is saying? Ask me. But I am still guilty because I can't control my facial expression. Me and my son both. My son is terrible. He's awful. If he's upset, you're going to see it. If he's confused, you're going to see it. If he's angry, see it. And I guess he got that from me. I can't say he got that from my wife. Uh, but our faces have a way of communicating even when we are silent. They have a way of communicating even when we don't intend for them to. In, in, in other words, your faith has a face. Yeah. It's just what the, what the text says. The text says that when Jesus saw their faith, they didn't say anything. They didn't even make a request. It says when he saw their faith. In other words, what does your faith face look like? In other words, when your words don't match your face, it leaves God confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Because you can walk around all day saying, I'm blessed and highly favored, yeah. but your face right says something different. I will bless the Lord at all times, but if your face yeah. says something, yeah. surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, but my face yeah. says something different. Pete, why is that important? Catch it. Because only the right face will unlock a new level. Yeah. But it's in the technology, not the text, the technology. My phone has something called face right. recognition. Right. Right. Yeah. Which means, unless I hold up the right face, yeah. my phone will stay locked right. as a security measure. Yeah. Right. Because I don't want somebody to access something that they shouldn't right. have access to. What are you trying to say? In this level of season, some blessings, some levels, some doors, can't open because God don't recognize your face. Wow. Okay. Because unless you have the right face, you won't qualify and access this new level. And until your words match your face, you're going to stay stuck in something you should already be graduated from. And some of us are 18, 19, 20 year olds in 10th grade because our face won't allow us to graduate. Your face, their face had faith. Jesus said, when I saw their faith, mm. yes, God. friend, your Hallelujah. sins yes, God. Yes, God. are forgiven. I'm not going to lie, that confused me. I know this is good. Y'all clapping. I got confused. Jesus, why are you forgiving sins? The man can't walk. And I'm sure the friends on the roof said, did you did you hear what he said? Right. <laughs> yeah. Did he say get up? Right. Did he say, did he say rub your knees or anything? <laughs> what did he it sound like he said, you forgive him? Yeah. Yeah. Now I know the conversation that we had on the way here. Catch it, because they probably was talking about all the things this man was gonna be able to do. Once they got into Jesus, man, I know you ain't been able to walk for a long time. I know you you can't even go to the bathroom and somebody carry you. I know you're ready to go to the bathroom by yourself. This, just having all kinds of conversations, just excited about the fact you won't be able to walk. And then they sit on the roof and he, did he say what I thought he said? We ain't coming for that, Jesus. My God, don't you see? We, we, we came here so he could walk. We brought him so he could walk. But the man needed to be forgiven. Mm. My God. Yes, sir. And you have to know the context of that region to understand the unintended, unexpected miracle. Because this man is wondering, all my life I've been told I did something wrong to right. be like this. Right. Right. Yeah. 
because that was the mindset, catching not just of the religious leaders of that day, but of the people of that region in that day, that if you were sick or ill or experiencing loss, that you had sinned against God. And Luke, particularly because he's a doctor, he is, he is one with details. He lets us know when people have been suffering a condition from birth. Which means this man was not born paralyzed. Which means something had to happen. And he became paralyzed. While we don't know the cause, we know his current condition. And in that time, your condition is defined by a curse. Which means that even though he would go and see the religious leaders of the law, they would tell him, you deserve what you are experiencing. Because surely, if you've asked for forgiveness, surely if you've said, I'm sorry, surely if you take a life and you're still here, that means your sin must be great. And so, so if, if God thinks your sin is great, you deserve to be on it. We even see that heart in the disciples in John 9 when they said, Jesus, why, why was this man born blind? Was it his sin or was it his, his, his parents' sin? Whole life. Thinking I can't be more because of something that I did. Wondering, what was it that was so bad I must be really messed up? What do you do? When you get to that point where you stop expecting to be forgiven because it's your fault. And it's really easy to be in the house and be close to Jesus and think, it's my fault. I ain't graduated yet and it's my fault. I ain't married yet and it's my fault. My kids don't act right and it's my fault. I'm not worthy of love, and it's my fault. Yeah. Credit is bad, and it's my fault. Can't keep a job, and it's my fault. Uh -huh. Health is deteriorating, and it's it got to be my fault. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. God, I said, I'm sorry. I, 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 I came to church. I, I, I asked for forgiveness. I, I prayed, and I praised, and I tithed, and I fasted, and I don't know what it's going to do, so surely this got to be. So why would he forgive me? Catch it, because I did do it. The pain is, it's my fault. The brokenness, the failure, the hurt, the disappointment, the despair, it's, it's my fault. And so since it's my fault, I'll never be forgiven. And it has to be. Because otherwise, why would I still be on this mat? Mm, my God. My God. Year after year on the same mat, watching people around me level up, watching people graduate, watching people get married, watching people get new houses and new cars and new this and new that, and I'm still on this same, same mat in the same spot in the same neighborhood with the same mindset. Because I must not be worth forgiving. So when this man is being carried, he's not thinking about his legs. He's thinking about the lies. When he's, he's not thinking about walking. He's thinking about the words of the people that told him he deserved to catch it that would have been in that house. Now I'm in a crowd of people who would recognize me. Uh huh. Wow. It's the same Pharisees, yeah. the same religious leaders, the same teachers yeah. that would have had to deem you clean or unclean. And since they came, catch it from the text saying, all over the region, they would have known him. 
seeing them laying there on that mat saying, what you gonna do, Jesus? Because obviously, if he didn't deserve to be on that mat, he wouldn't be. And so while the friends thought it was about walking, and the crowd thought it was about walking, there's a man on the mat saying, I just want to know, can I be forgiven? For whatever it is mm -hmm. that I did wrong, Hallelujah, Jesus. that I haven't forgiven myself. Yes. Well, well. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. Because if you walk too soon without being forgiven and without forgiving yourself, you can walk right back into right. what put you on the mat in the first place. And so what I missed was that he needed to be forgiven first so that he knew you don't have to be what put you here in the first place. It's in the, it's in the text. Because the text says, I need to do more than get you up. I got to turn you around. Because if I get you up and you walk, you'll walk right back to the same relationship. You'll walk right back to the same job, you walk right back to the same attitude, you walk right back to the same mindset. So before you walk, you are forgiven. Yes, yes. And I need you to catch the power in that word forgive because the word is a fear me, which is literally translated to let go and give up a debt, to keep no longer, to go in order to go to another place, to let go as it has expired, to go away leaving so that what is left may remain. In other words, man, not only are you forgiven, but the sin you've been carrying, the guilt you've been carrying, the weight of worry and fear of a devalued future, when you leave, leave it with me. You don't have to carry it no more. You are forgiven. You don't have to carry it no more. You are forgiven. The mistakes, let it go. The failures, let it go. The divorce, let it go. Flooding out of college, let it go. The bad relationship, let it go. Let it go. Because Jesus needs you to know not only did they nail him to the cross, they nailed it to the cross. It is whatever it is that you thought made you unworthy of forgiveness. Well, thank you, Father. So before you leave for the day, I need you to get in your mind. Yes. What is my it? What is it that put me on the mat? Because whatever it is has to stay here. Because the debt has been paid with the blood on the cross, the guilt. And the shame no longer has power over you. The, the fear, the pain, it did happen, but leave it here. Here it is. Because he said, leave it here, but take the mat with you. And I know why would he ask him to take, take the mat? Because some of us, not all of us, but some of us need to be reminded of where we were when God brought us out. Because we can forget with short-term memory loss. And we can forget that we had a mat season and think that we too good and we too saved and we too delivered and we too cute and we know scripture. And we become people in the crowd because you forgot you had a mat. And so Jesus said, you are forgiven. Get up and take your mat with you. So when you are tempted, with your it, you're reminded by your mat that there is a place that you never want to go back to. Because some of us, not all of us, were laying on a mat and sleeping on a mat and sleeping with a mat. Living with a mat. Driving a mat, working on a mat, having mat dreams and mat attitudes surrounded by mat friends. Oh. Trying to figure out why you can't escape. Right. The mat, leave the sand, but take the mat, just don't use right. come on, come on. 
than that. Right, right. And because we have a tendency to forget, Jesus said, let me give you a demonstration. I'm done, but a demonstration is the yes. action or process of showing the existence or truth of something huh. by giving proof yes. Yes. of evidence. I used to wonder, especially when you study and you look at the miracles of Jesus, why can you make this one so public? Because there's a whole lot of miracles he did in private, some side of the road miracles. There's some miracles where people was in the crowd before he spit on the man's eyes. He said, let's go outside the town because I don't know that they will be able to handle what I'm about to do. So there's miracles where he would isolate before he would elevate and get in this situation. A man looking to level up had to be lowered down. In front of, in front of everybody. Watch it. My God. My God. Catch it because the people My wanted God. a demonstration. Right. Many came to see. Many came and saw. The text says that they were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things yeah. today. Yeah. Catch it, but only one person left change. Right. Yeah. Because God will meet you on the level of your expectation. Yeah. And the reason why some of us won't leave this house on a new level is because you came to see a preacher, but you didn't come to experience his power. You came to see, but you didn't come to be seen. Jesus said, I, I came for, for the sick. I didn't come for those who's well. In other words, some of us have a tendency to go to the hospital and never check in. You just in the waiting room. Which means I see, but I have yet to be seen. Could it be that there is somebody in the house today that's hanging on to the text where it says that the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick? They came to hear him preach, but they missed the fact that there was power to heal in the house. Healing was in the house. And only one left healed. The others left in awe. And there's somebody under the sound of my voice. You didn't come for a show. You didn't come for a sermon. You came for the Savior. You didn't come to be entertained. You came for an encounter. You didn't come to hear something good. You came to be healed. You didn't come out of obligation. You came out of desperation. And God is saying, for those who came to do more than just see, you go see. Because I, I need to, to see those who came to be seen. And today I'm willing to make you a demonstration. Because the Pharisees heard, heard him say, you've forgiven it. Said, who? Who are you? Who, who does he think he is? They didn't realize Jesus' words was for the man. But his walk was for the crowd. <laughs> because you don't know who I am. And because you just came to see something, today God is saying, I'm going to make somebody close to you a demonstration. Just so that you can get what you came here for. So for everybody that came here today and just came to see something, somebody else that came here Today is saying there's a world who doesn't know who I am, who is 
settling for watching instead of worshiping, willing to be a crowd and not my witness and satisfied with seeing and not becoming. And today, I want you to walk. I want you to walk. I want you to leave whatever it is that you came in here with because you are forgiven. I want you to walk because your latter days be greater than your former days. I want you to walk. Because your wife needs to see what walking while you weep looks like. I need you to walk. Because your husband needs to see that you can be supported even when you're confused. I need you to walk. Because your kids need to see strength in a world that doesn't value it. I need you to walk. Because there's a world that needs to know the reconciliation between races is possible. I need you to walk. I need you to walk. Because there's somebody looking at you on that mat and they don't think that you will. Mm, yeah, yeah. Wow. I need you to walk for you. I need you to forgive you. I need you to believe again for you. I need you just to love you. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can do that, God said today, this is just going to be a demonstration. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for making me a demonstration. Proof of evidence that you are still God. Proof that you can still do a lot with a little. I pray right now. Not to be a part of a crowd of church, but 